And then after that, uh, eventually the bishop would come to do the anointing, okay, to confirm what had already happened at baptism. All right. And so they said it should be done by this age. Well, then actually the, the maximal age became the minimal age. And so it really got separated spatially. And over the centuries, it's gone all these different ways. Up until about the up until early 1900s, though, people would still be confirmed. Then they'd make their first communion. Right? What happened was in the early 20th century, St. Pius X, whose great love of the Eucharist, wanted children to receive the Eucharist as soon as possible, as soon as they could understand some of the basics of it. Right? So that's why most of us received our first communion in second grade. Right? So it was before confirmation. And so over the years, it's been all over the place. My brother, who's just a few years older than me, actually was confirmed before his first communion. He was in first grade. Right? I made my first communion in second grade. I was confirmed in fourth grade. And it was about, well, about 40 some years ago uh, that they went to another model that was a, uh, I don't know if we have anyone who was in this program when I was here before, but uh, it, was, it was a two year program and there was service project, there were service hours. And it was like your sophomore and junior year, so it really kind of became your, your senior and your junior year, because it was a two year program. And it's like, well, do we want to confirm them? Do we want to ordain them? All right? Because other than holy orders, there was no sacrament that required that much time. All right? So it was about almost about 20 years ago, they moved it down. They said, we're just going to do the freshman year. Don't have to do service project hours. And uh, this is going to be a one year process. So that's what we've been working with. All right? Now, remember, originally, this was all connected to baptism. So, and Ben will go into the details, I think, with this a little bit more. But people get the idea, well, this is like, this is like a Catholic bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah. Okay, well, they become an, okay, well, no. It's not really a sacrament of maturation, okay? It's a sacrament of initiation, something that kind of was part of the beginning there, all right? So, we've moved it in 2018. Bishop Johnston had these different listening sessions, listening sessions throughout the diocese. And uh, there was a number then, they got all this information, and then they had this committee trying to put it all together. And I was actually a member of that committee, but one of the things that came up was meeting the needs of our youth, and at least according to one study, if not more, a lot of people make up their mind what, and this is, I mean, statistically, not absolutely, all right? But will make up their mind what their relationship to their faith life is going to be by the time they're in seventh grade. Well, that means we want to get them before seventh grade. So we're in the process of moving it to sixth grade. All right, sounds simple. All right, well, you know, if you're like, it's at uh, St. Mary's Parish in Carrollton where Father Mark is from, or... Uh, Immaculate Conception, Rich, Missouri, where I was for three years, very, very small parishes, three grades, no problem, one year, one year you're all caught up. Okay. St. Therese isn't like that. So last year, we did the ninth graders according to schedule. They were confirmed in January, all right? And I said, well, at least with the school kids, uh, we want to try and do it. So the eighth graders, last year's eighth graders, who are now ninth graders, we did the instruction in school, and... They were confirmed in May. Funny thing about kids, they keep growing. So our eighth graders last year became ninth graders this year. All right. So we got some catch-up work to do. We got back taxes to pay, so to speak. And so what we're doing, that's where we're going to have a couple of jumbo classes, and then we're going to get, it's just going to be sixth grade. All right. So, oh. Uh, that, that's going to be a lot more user friendly. We just got to, we got to get there. All right. So that's why this year it's going to, uh, for our students in the school, it's our seventh and eighth graders. All right. Uh, they'll be receiving their instruction uh, in school. Uh, I did my first uh, class with them. 
I've, I've done my first fellowship, but actually seventh and eighth grade now, all right? And Father Randy and Father Mark will be doing those, all right? For our students who don't attend uh, St. Therese School, and we also have our ninth graders who don't, didn't attend St. Therese before. So for our seventh, eighth, and ninth graders who don't attend school, it's going to be a few Sunday nights, uh, Sunday afternoons, I'm sorry, uh, here, uh, basically through the fall, not every week. So it's like five, five classes and a, and a retreat, yeah. five, five classes and a retreat, which is basically another class, okay? So uh, going from three, make it very convenient to get to five o'clock mass. So that is, uh, that's kind of the basic structure there. And then next year, of course, we're going to have to, uh, again, by next year, our sixth graders, guess what? They're going to be seventh graders. And our fifth graders are going to be sixth graders. So we're going to have another big class like this, all right? But then we're going to be on track. Uh, so the confirmation this coming January, January 18th. at 10 a.m. with Bishop Johnson, there's going to be about 190 confirmandi. Uh, the bishop knows that, and he's, he's ready to go with that. I said, okay. Because all I really have to do at a confirmation is just set up straight and watch the bishop work. Okay. Now, there is a long-range plan that's starting with this for those of you who have younger kids. So with starting out actually in fourth grade, with fourth grade, they're going to be doing the Ten Commandments, and they're going to be things to do with their families at home. Uh, if you have fourth graders, you should have already was either in the school of religion or in the school, you should have already received that. Okay. And then it's going to be in fifth grade. It's going to be uh, about vocation. It's going to be in third grade. They're going to start something eventually. So this is people who have younger kids, you know, about our family mission. And then sixth grade confirmation. So, again, what we want to try and do is get people uh, caught up, get those back taxes paid, give your children uh, adequate and good catechesis regarding what the sacrament is and what it is not, and to make it as uh, user-friendly as possible. Uh, ben is going to go through a lot of the details here with them. One of them is with a sponsor form, okay? And so for a sponsor for confirmation, okay, there are certain requirements, all right? They need to be confirmed. They need to be 16. Ideally, we prefer 18, but I mean an older sibling can do it. A confirmed uh, practicing Catholic over the age of 16, if they're married, they need to be married in the church. Uh, if they're not married, they should not be in irregular living situations or things like that. It's not a matter of grabbing the nearest relative, okay? It's a matter of someone you're holding up for your child as a model of the faith. And so please make sure with your people, just say it's a lot of heartache all the way around to know what the requirements are. I mean, one year we had a uh, someone, and the grandfather, they, he wanted his grandfather to be the sponsor, okay? And the grandfather, to his credit, was very honest. He says, I don't go to Mass. Okay. Well, I'm sure in many ways uh, that man is a good role model for his grandson, but there's a particular way where it's not meeting the requirement, all right? You know, it's like, uh, you know, uh, I don't, yeah, to practice medicine, you need to have a license. Uh, to practice law, uh, you need to be a member of the bar and so forth. So uh, he'll go over and grade a few of that. But again, just for, for the sake of everyone, pay attention to what those requirements are and try and make sure that the sponsor for your child meets those requirements. All right? So Ben is new to our parish staff. Uh, he is doing RCIA, which is with the old, uh, which is the formerly known as RCIA. All right? Uh, he's our safe environment coordinator for a lot of our, he and Terry Joe over in the school really do, do that because we got a whole lot of volunteers, a whole lot of activities here, and, uh, and he's also helping with confirmation now. Test. There we go. Okay. So the easiest way to do this is remember that A, I'm new here, and B, you're new to this too. So we're going to be going through this together.
together. Quick little tiny bit about my background. Uh, I actually <laughs> ran into one of my old students from St. Pat's. He grew up. You're not supposed to do that. But he grew up and now has kids of his own. I used to teach at Pius Defense High School in St. Patrick's Elementary School many years ago. I left that world entirely and became a professional opera singer around the world for 35 years. Lived in Europe for more on than off 10 years, uh, mainly in Germany, Italy, and France. Um, while I was living in Germany, I actually worked with several parishes there, helped out with confirmation there. And then based out of San Francisco and based out of Philadelphia, both, and worked with confirmation and OCIA, which is now the RCIA has changed its name to OCIA. So I've done this a few times. Um, never to this size. I've never worked with 190 kids at one time before. So the good news is it will be split up. We'll have you know, two teams. We'll have the school team and we'll have the parish team. So we'll, we'll have to have a big football game afterward. Uh, I, I, it's going to be a blowout of a game, I can tell you that. So we will dive right in. Hopefully everybody has the red uh, top page or pages, I should say, that one, and the blue top confirmation. Uh, basically, I just put slides together of what you have right here. And I'm dead serious with this. I'm about as informal as it gets. If you have a question, hey, I got a question, OK? And ask the question now, because there are probably 128 to 130 people in here that probably have the same question. Question number one, why do you have a bad lisp? It's very simple. I was an opera singer until five years ago. Five years ago, I contracted <laughs> Tongue cancer, like the worst thing an opera singer could have. So I had half of my tongue taken out. And what I have now is this patch of my arm is now the left side of my tongue. So if, I, if you ever have trouble understanding me, just, hey, say it again. I have, no, I, I'm, I'm, I have no ego about that whatsoever. I just want to make sure that you understand everything I'm saying. OK, so far so good? Oh, yeah, back there, he's like, yeah, no, why, huh, what? Okay. All right. Welcome to confirmation, number one. We are going to do the intro to the courses. We will have the kids on October 6th, and we'll be giving them the same information then that we're, be going, that we're giving to you now. On the 6th, this is for the people of the, or the kids of the parish. Now, the school... You're already going through this. You've already gone through this. So quite a bit of the information tonight is for both. And then there are things like this that are strictly for the parish. Now, how many kids of yours are in the school? Raise your hand. Great. Awesome. Love it. How many of your kids are with the parish? Literally half. This is great. OK, good. So I'm not just like talking to four people in here on this part. Uh, on the 6th, we're going to go through all those things up there, and we're going to go through some of those tonight as well, OK? It's also this first front part of the page. The classes are going to be from 3 to 5 on Sunday afternoon on certain dates. I believe in October there are two dates. In November there are three dates. December there's one date for class and one date for a retreat. Now, the retreat is only for the parish side. The school side, they're doing their own combo kind of thing over there. So you haven't got to worry about that. Uh, there will be an interview process. Now, this interview process is strictly from the journals. Each kid is going to have to have a journal. They're going to write things down in what they think, what they're feeling at the time. And these journals will be gone through by me, probably some of the priests, and some of the table leaders, OK? Making sure that if they ever have any questions, any problems, they can come to us at any time. All right? Just want to make sure that you guys realize 
We are open to their questions at any time. This, is, this uh, confirmation is kind of like hopefully shooting yourself in the foot. You only do it once, all right? Confirmation is only a one-time thing, so we want to make sure they get it right. We are going to have a rehearsal. Uh, we have <laughs> just under 200 kids <clears throat> that we're going to be confirming all in one day. 200, just short of. That's a lot of kids. So we are going to have to have a rehearsal. We will schedule that time for the rehearsal. The actual confirmation, make sure, make sure, make sure you write this down, is January 18th at 10 a.m. January 18th, 10 a.m. is a Saturday. So we may be having a rehearsal the Saturday before, all right? Or we may have it at 8 o'clock the same day. We're not sure yet. We still need to work out. We weren't planning on having 200 people at one time. So we're still in the process of working that out right now. Things we need. Um, all of these can be and hopefully will be sent to us through our website at the very end. I will give you the actual website address for this. It, it's the parish website. Go to sacraments, confirmation, click that. All the information you need to fill out is right there on that page. But we will need your birth certificate, uh, a registration form, which thank you for those of you that uh, when I walked in here to set up, I had 22. I now have 28 today, new people coming in. So thank you for those. Um, permission forms, teenage code of conduct, pre-interview form, all of those things need to be in very soon. Now, the one thing that's not up there yet, we do have a little click box for who their patron saint is going to be and how to pick one. That will be in their very first class over here on October 6th. We'll, we'll explain all those things to them. Uh, over at the school there, they've already begun to do these things. So eventually, I will need to know what their patron saint is or who their patron saint is, and I will need to know who their sponsor is. Now, as Father Joe said, please, 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 it can't be a parent. I hate to say it, it can't be a parent. It's like in baptism, the parent can't be the sponsor. It has to be a quote unquote Catholic in good standing. So there's actually on the website a form that they may have to have signed by their pastor. All right? Uh, the diocese has really cracked down on this because of a very, very good reason. The sponsor of a confirmandi, that's what the technical name is, they are walking with them not just for the next like five classes, a retreat, and confirmation. They're going to be their spiritual parent for life. If they ever have any spiritual issues, 20 years from now, 15 years from now, right before they get married, 30 years from now, if they're still alive, they have somebody they can go to to have a spiritual conversation who they're not going to feel funny talking to, typically a parent. Okay? This is a person that is very carefully chosen with them and possibly for them. I, it sounds crazy. I was a confirmation sponsor to somebody your age way back when, we're talking 30 years ago, I got a call from him last week. He's having some spiritual questions. Well, I'm here, that's my job, okay? So be careful when you pick those sponsors, please. It, it really does make a difference. Uh, table parents, we still need table parents. We have coming to this side for the, the church side from three to five on those class dates. Right now, I believe we have anywhere from five to seven table parents. We're gonna have around 85 to 90 kids. We're hoping to have one table parent per table, okay? 
So we're going to need anywhere from 14, call it, to 18 table parents, and I've got five to seven. Please, 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 if any of you would consider being a table parent, talk to me afterward, email me, call me, send carrier pigeon, whatever it takes. I really need table parents. Now, to be a table parent, you do not have to have a PhD in divinity. You do not have to be a catechist. But what you do need to be is a good person willing to help kids out and know just the basics of your faith. All right, everybody take your right hand. Right hand. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay, you pass. If you can do that, if you can do that, you pass to be a table parent, okay? So talk to me after we really, we're dead serious. This process can only work really, really well and make it a personal experience if we have table parents, okay? So talk to me after if you can. Um, if, and this is an old policy that we've had for many, many years, I'm just carrying it on. If you have a planned absence, remember, we're only doing five classes, and this is an important time of their life. Confirmation happens only once. So if you have that planned trip to see grandma. Let's see if you can delay that by a week, okay? It's really important for these guys and gals to be in these classes if they can be. But if you have a planned absence, please, please, please email me ahead of time so I can check it and then follow up and say, okay, watch the video. We have a camera back there. All these classes are going to be videotaped. They have to watch the class. Uh, then discuss it, and here's the best part. We're asking that the classes that they video, that, we, that they watch on video, they watch it with their parent, so that the parent knows what's going on as well. And then, if they miss that class, they watch the recording on the YouTube link, and they write a one-page, 12-point uh, font, single-spaced essay as to what they watch, okay? It's not meant to be a punishment. It's meant to be, okay, I understand what I saw, all right? These classes are going to be taught by Father Joe, Father Randy, and Father Mark. They're good classes. I've already seen most of the material from these guys. These are really, really good classes. So we just want to make sure that they know and understand. And the reason we want you to watch it with them is if they have any questions, they, you can help answer those questions for them, okay? Behavioral expectations, please. No talking. Don't use a cell phone while somebody's up here teaching or talking. And no eating during the class, all right? Plus the fact we are, we've planned strategically to do these classes from 3 to 5 on Sunday afternoon. Can anybody tell me why? because it's followed by five o'clock mass, all right? You get to go to this class. You've learned about the Holy Spirit. You've learned about what the Holy Spirit does in the mass. You've learned that confirmation is not a graduation. It's a continuation of your baptismal promise. And part of that promise is we at baptism become a priest, a prophet, and a king. Any of you been baptized or as an adult or you've had your kids baptized, you've heard the priest or deacon say, I baptize you as a priest, a prophet, and a king. A part of the priestly mandate is to go to any mass on Sunday. So when you get that blessing, that's a part of the Catholic mandate, that you go every day week. And that's a part of what we're talking about here. They're going into confirmation. They're confirming that they are truly Catholic. All right. So we understand if you have typically go on 10 o'clock, great. Keep going at 10 o'clock and then we'll see you guys from three to five. But if you're used to going whenever we ask that you go as a family at five if possible. Uh, they will be picking a patron saint. And uh, not just for them, but the each table family, they will be picking a saint 
as their patron for their table. This is going to come really important when the kids are playing different games, when they're competing against each other for points. Whoever gains enough points at the end will probably get a prize of some kind. Well, they will get a prize of some kind. Not quite sure what that's going to be yet. We will find out. Again, this is for the Sunday classes. Sorry, school classes. Uh, each table will have a parent, and they'll be leading discussions, monitoring the work, keeping records of the table's points. Uh, that table, you know, St. Therese table gets 10 points for whatever, okay? It'll be up to the table parents to keep, keep track of those points. Uh, points will be awarded for all kinds of fun stuff. Attendance points, if everybody comes, boom, table gets 10 points. Game points, whoop, let me back up, too far. Game points. The priests will be teaching a class for about an hour from three to four. Then we'll take a quick short break. We will probably have a discussion during that time. And after the discussion, we have about five or six different games that they'll be playing. Now, it, we're not talking touch football here. We're talking Jeopardy. We're talking uh, Pictionary. We're talking you know, different games like that but with the confirmation theme and the answers, questions and answers from that day's theme. That day we might be talking about the Holy Spirit. So all the themes will be what they just learned in that class right before it, all right? Uh, here are the classes. And again, they are on this sheet right here. Three Central Mysteries will be taught by Father Joe. I went through it uh, with him over at the school with the seventh graders last week. Kid you not, probably the best explanations of the three big mysteries of the church I've ever seen. Really, really, really good. Again, we videotape all these classes. If you guys want a refresher course, please go watch the video. It's worth it. His explanation particularly of the Paschal Mystery, awesome. You're going to love it. Gospel message from Father Randy. Uh, God has a plan for each one of us, and through the Gospels, we begin to understand where those are and how they come about. Through the gifts freely given by the grace of God, we understand what grace is and what the sacraments are, also by Father Randy on 1110. Again, this class in particular, he goes through all the sacraments and why they're important and where they come from. Really, really important stuff. November 24th, talking right before Thanksgiving, what is and what isn't confirmation. Number one, confirmation is not a graduation. Confirmation is a continuation of what they learned and who they became at baptism. All right, this is confirming that yes, I believe I am Catholic. I believe that Jesus is in me, indwelling in me in the Holy Spirit, and now I can actually take on the responsibility of going out and spreading the word of God. All right, so it's not about wearing, you know, a, a robe, walking down the aisle, picking up your, you know, picking up your prop and going to have a party. Although you could do that. But this is more of, more of a, uh, more of a signature of saying, yes, this is who I am. This is who I've become. This is who I will be. All right. Uh, gifts uh, of the fruit, uh, gifts and fruit of the spirit. Um, they are listed there. Now, the reason I'm going through each one of these, I will be emailing you, and this is for school parents, and this is for parish parents. I will be emailing you, that's why these emails are very important. I'll be emailing you each week, right before the class, or like right a week before the class takes place, three or four, I think the longest is five, different YouTube videos. These videos are like from four minutes long to seven minutes long. They are on the class itself. 
fruits, I, I, we, we keep joking around the office, fruits and nuts of the spirit. Uh, you get to watch these two to four different YouTube videos with, with your student. Watch it with them and have a conversation with them about whatever that subject is. And then we're going to have you have, have them write just a single page in the journal that they have, okay? Just check it over, make sure it's okay. Again, we as Catholics, the first and primary teacher of the faith is not me. It's not Father Joe. The first and primary teacher of the faith is you, the parent. You are the first and primary teacher. People freak out about that. I am not qualified. I'm not worthy. You are. You've been teaching them your entire life. You have taught them everything they literally know. Now we're asking you to help us out. Watch the video with your kid. Go through it with them. So, Johnny, what would you think? He might tell you. Well, tell you what, Johnny, here's what I thought I saw. Let's talk about that for a second. Okay, then they go, they have a journal, they write down what your conversation was. And you, as a parent, get to sign it, bring it back to the table leader, and those points that we were talking about, they will go down and say, yep, Marge signed off on little Johnny. Okay? And that gets them their table points. The whole point is to have a conversation. In teaching and in learning, we try to hit each student with the same information three different times in three different ways. The parents are going to teach it one time. The priests are going to teach it a second time. Through games in this class, we're going to teach it a third time. They're really good at this at the school, by the way. They do this all the time. So, again, I have no idea. I talked to Kim the other day. I don't know how they're going to do this, if they're going to do the uh, journal idea for class time or not over there. I am sending the videotapes to all parents, okay? Whoever your primary is on the sheet that you signed out for me, I'm sending that information to the primary and just talk to Kim and she will, she will tell you how they're dealing with that over at the school, all right? Um, the retreat. The retreat is for, again, the non-St. Therese School kids. It'll be on December 15th. Most of the information is TBA at this point. Again, we have like 1,001 kids that we haven't had before. So we still have some minutia that we need to work through, figure out, time out, that type of thing. We will get in contact with you guys and gals as soon as we know, all right? Okay, again, what we're asking you to do, along with the courses, we're asking the parents to view the following YouTubes and the following that will be emailed out to you all each week and discuss them with your kids before class. It is vitally important for the parents to be involved in their children's spiritual upbringing. Then, have your child write any questions or reflections they may have in the journal and sign it. Confirmation. Confirmation is with the bishop here at St. Therese Parish, right upstairs on January 18th, which is a Saturday, I'm pretty sure, at 10 a.m. Now, don't look at the parish uh, confirmation, blah, blah, blah. It says noon on there. I'm trying to get that changed. I'll have it changed next week. It's really 10 o'clock, all right? It is 10 o'clock. It's in the bishop's registry. I've already seen it, physically seen it. It's in there. So that's, um, that's where we're at. Any questions about the process so far? Yeah. Uh, the question was, do the sponsor, sponsors for the kids have to come only to the retreat or can they come to the class? They can come to any class they want to. They can sit with their kids a little bit behind them at the tables because we are creating these family tables. Um, yeah, I'd love to have the sponsors in so the sponsors have something to talk about with their own 
God's son or God daughter, okay? I have no problem with that. The retreat, I would love it again if they are there. Now, that being said, we might have 85 to 90 kids. We may have to move this like down to, <laughs> down to Bartle Center or someplace because it's huge. If we have a sponsor for each one and this, you know, we'll figure this out. We will figure this out. But sponsors are welcome anytime. Parents are welcome anytime. We may have you be, you know, sitting in there simply because of room. But yes, you are you are always welcome at any time. Great question. Thank you. They are not required. No, they are not required to be here. They, I would prefer it if, highly, if they were at the retreat, for sure. Classes, if they can, it actually benefits the kid. It really does. That way they know they're really serious about this and really seriously a part of their life. Okay? Great questions. Yeah? No, go for it. It could be, no, it could be a journal you pick up, you know, one that you've already got that, you know, some some pharmacy gave you. I, it doesn't matter to me, no. I'm sorry? Absolutely. Parents, please do sit in for out-of-town sponsors. Yes, please. Yes, great question. Um, over the years, we've had issues as to what's proper dress. Uh, to make it easy and to make it equitable, and honestly, it makes the bishop very pleased, is they will all be wearing a red, I believe it's red, uh, graduation gown or choir robe, basically. It's not a graduation gown, it's actually a choir robe. The reason we take your kids' measurements on the intake form is so that actually how tall they are and about what they weigh, we turn that over to a company where we purchase these robes and then we give them out at either the rehearsal or the actual confirmation day, one of the two, we'll figure that part out. But yeah, yeah, they will be wearing robes. Under the robe, hopefully, no shorts, long pants. Please, please, please. I just went through a confirmation downtown where, I kid you not, the girls were wearing skirts way half fly. No. Please, 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 if you can, please have your daughters wear at least knee-length skirts, please. No blue jeans, if, you, if at all possible, please wear slacks. I'm not pent up about long sleeve shirts or short sleeve shirts, but it's January 18th. I mean, you know. Uh, Father Joe, how many people does the, seat, does the church seat? Bring them. More the merrier. If we have SRO, if we have standing room only at a confirmation, I kid you not, as old as Bishop Johnson is, he will do a cartwheel. Okay? <laughs> bring them. No, no, bring them. I mean, the, the center section from, from front to back is all going to be sponsors and confirmandi. But around the sides and toward the very back, yeah, bring them. Yeah. Bring four, sure. And, and parents probably, yeah. You know the secret to that? Get here early. Get here early. I, I, I mean, I don't know what. Okay, think about this. Think about this. How often does a church have a problem of this kind? Well, we're going to confirmation. Well, there's four or five people. We never fill a church for that. No. 
being realistic, somebody's going to bring 12, and somebody's going to bring, like my family, two. It's going to average out. I'm not worried. I really am not worried. I am sure that some 22-year-old sees an 80-year-old at the back. They're going to stand up and let them see. Have a seat. I'm not worried. <laughs> it might get a little long. Okay, we'll, we'll give you that. But no, I, I, I say more the merrier. We will, if we need to, we will live stream down here. I'm not worried. Yeah. Okay, volunteer hours. Great question. Volunteer hours. Here's the scoop on volunteer hours. When confirmation was for sophomores through seniors in high school, they were mobile. They were able to drive themselves. They were able to get around. In today's age, if we asked sixth graders through eighth graders to do service hours, say 20 to 40 service hours a year, guess who gets to take them nonstop two hours here, four hours there, and eight hours there? <laughs> oh, we got to talk at your OCIA class, pal. I'm just saying. No. Again, we try to make this as painless as possible. Now, it does not mean we don't want them to do service hours. We're not requiring it of them. Go for it. There will be, yeah, there will be, there will be an interview at the end. Well, we're going to be talking to the kids as we go. The table sponsors will be talking to them as we go. The priest and I will be talking to them as they go. We want, and it's, again, with 190 kids. I'll be here from 8 a.m. till at least midnight and then some, talking to people. Um, we will be talking to them as they go. What we are going to be asking the table leaders to do is if some child has issues, it's like, yeah, I just don't get this. I don't know why I'm here. Those are the kids we want to talk to and find out, are they really having a spiritual issue with this? Yes. Again. Some of that's going to happen at the retreat. Now, the other part, at the school, they're taking care of that as far as who, what their, what their uh, exit process is, as what their exit interview, those of us in business, that's what it would be. Okay? Good questions. Great. Anything else? Okay. Yeah, go for it. Grandparents can. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Grandparents, we, a lot of times, some of the best sponsors are grandparents because the kids already have a very good spiritual or personal relationship with them. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great one. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. All of those blue line links that are in that packet that I gave you, I'm giving, to you, giving them to you on paper here right now. Those are the classes I will be sending out. I just want to make sure that you have them, okay? So you have them on paper. I'll be emailing them to you fairly soon, uh, like the week before each class, so that you have a chance to go through it with them, okay? Any other questions? Okay, I have one more question for you. Chiefs. What's the spread? Who's going to win? I, I mean, it's the most important question of the night, right? All right? Okay. All right. If there are no other questions, let me put this up there. All things of confirmation. If you have not registered. Now, <laughs> here's the fun part. I started this morning with a cup of coffee and my phone going insane. I'm getting person after person after person signing up for confirmation today. 
uh, I started the class, I, I set up for the class, I had 22 today. I started the class, I checked, I have 27 just today, okay? Oh, you know, it's a, <laughs> you get a free sample, the Holy Spirit, okay. So, if you know anyone else, please, please, please have them go to All Things Confirmation at this website. It's the St. Therese website slash confirmation. Fill out all your paperwork there. Now, all of the classes, these videos that we have going on right now, we're going to post those at the uh, parish website on YouTube. So it's YouTube slash at St. Therese's Parish or St. Therese Parish Community. All right? Just scroll down. You'll see a bunch of Father Ramsey's stuff. You'll see a bunch of Father Joe's stuff. And then you'll hit the confirmation classes. This one you're in right now, you'll be on. And then there's my information. You can call me uh, at 816-741-2800, extension 223, or email me any questions at, at the website or at the uh, parish. OK, anything else? All right, pick up the sheet, pick it up, look at the back. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen? Prayer at the bottom. Come, Holy Spirit, prayer. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall create and you shall renew the face of the earth. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Have fun. <laughs>